Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable. Followers streaming every day, various platforms. Trust me, you'll find a way. Soon, the followers, you will make it through. The fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah by your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fitra is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. As you guys can see, Ramadan has ended. Everybody is celebrating the Eid. We got people still celebrating the Eid. And, uh, you know, my classes go on every day of the year, even on the day of the Eid. And I always have uh, less people on that day because, you know, it's understandable because people are celebrating, which they rightfully should. But my classes still have to go on because I have Muslims in different parts of the world joining. So, alhamdulillah, again, I want to congratulate everyone, you know, on having completed this wonderful month of Ramadan and we're now going and we're now in the month of Shawal. And before I start my lecture, let me go ahead and answer the question that I got from several of you, uh, several of the new Shahadas. And I, in fact, I'm, a brother is typing it now. Okay. I'm getting ready to answer your that question now. I, I knew it, 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 we, it. Okay. First of all, I want every Muslim listening to me to remember <laughs> yeah, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized to us that no voluntary deed takes precedence over an obligatory one. What do I mean by that? You don't get more rewards doing what Allah didn't command you to do. I mean, it's just common sense. Uh, if you want reward, you want to earn the love of Allah, you have to do the things that he commanded you to do first and foremost. If you're not praying, if you're not wearing hijab, if you're not uh, 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 fulfilling all the obligations that Allah commanded us to do, then your charity, your voluntary deeds are of no avail. You have to fulfill the obligations first. So where what am I where am I going with this? Well, I'm answering the question. A lot of Muslims are asking me about fasting the six days of the month of Shawal. First of all, again, you have to remember you have to read when you read those hadiths, you have to take the time and ponder what you're reading. Don't add to it and don't take away from it. First of all, what the hadith, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said is anyone, anyone who completes, that's the key word, completes, anyone who completes, I repeat, anyone who completes the fast of Ramadan and then that's another key word. And then, and then, and then fast the six days of Shawal. 
Okay, so those are the words that we guys don't key in on. Complete. You have to make up your days of Ramadan first. If you don't make up your days of Ramadan, any voluntary fast you do don't don't count. Because first of all, you're not obligated to fast it's the six days of Shawal. I'm not fasting them at all. I'm just letting you guys know. I don't fast six days of Shawal. In fact, I don't do no more fast for the year because fasting is hard for me because I have GERD. I have to drink something every hour. You know, if I go a certain amount of time, I'm going to back up. So I don't do that. So I don't fast. All the only fast I do is Ramadan. So that's, I'm saying that to say that first of all, any other fast, it's not even obligatory. You don't have to fast no other time. And where is my Dalio? The Hadith, where one of the Bedouins, and he, in fact, he was from the Aus tribe, he converted to Islam. And he came to the Prophet and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, tell me what is expected of me in regards to fasting. I understand that we have to fast. What do we have to do in regards to fasting? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the only fast that you have to do is the month of Ramadan. The man then asked him, are there any other fast that I'm obligated to do? The Prophet said, no. no. If you want to do other voluntary fasts, you, all you have to do is fast the month of Ramadan. And what's the source? What's the source? Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. So I don't want you sisters to allow shaitan because remember Ramadan's over now. The big Ifrit have been released from their chains. Iblis is, is, is released from his chains. You have your personal jinn who never left you. You know, Shaitan is going to get to whispering to you, your personal gem, because he's angry. He's angry at you because your fitra has been awakened. He's angry at you because you reap, you guys did good this Ramadan. You reaped a lot of blessings from Allah. So you're one of the things, one of the traps that Shaitan does is he'll make us concentrate on doing actions that we don't have to do. So as to occupy our time, whereas we don't do what we are supposed to do. In other words, you will sit there and fast six days of Shawal and you know you got 10 days to make up from Ramadan. You haven't even completed. The prophet said you have to complete your fast of Ramadan. You have to make those days up first. So, so there's the answer to the question that all of you are asking me. You know, you if you have to first complete your fast of Ramadan, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and then after you make those days up, you can do six days of Shawal, and they don't have to be consecutive. That's another question that the other, um, yes, brother, um, I can't read your name because it's so small. The type is in here, but uh, the brothers asked me, "Do he has? Does do I have to do all six days back to back?" No, you can do one a week or two here, three there, and you have the whole month of Shawal. And I want you guys to also get ready to answer that too. To answer the next question, yes, no, no fast on this planet brings more reward than Ramadan. Again, the voluntary deeds do not outweigh the oblig obligatory ones. What's the reward of Ramadan? Forgiveness of all your past sins. What's the, the reward of Shawal? The next coming year sins. I mean, come on, guys. Ramadan brings more reward than any other fast. Yeah, so complete your fast uh, in Ramadan. And Sister Amina, what happened? You said that they got somebody was shooting at the E. This happens. Here we go. Philly, what's going on with the Muslims in Philadelphia? What happened for um, um, Kyra? 
They got shot outside the mosque today. What happened? Was it the Salafi mosque? Was it Germantown? Germantown's always in the news. It was Germantown. Germantown, that mosque on Germantown is always in the news with shooting. What mosque was it? Germantown? For real? Oh, it's West Philly. It wasn't Germantown. What happened? Why were they shooting? They arguing over who going to do the prayer? Oh, Sister Claire. Claire Muhammad's mosque. Not Germantown. Okay, good. Germantown, not this time. What, did, what happened? What were they shooting and fighting over? A space to pray? These are the signs of the last hour, guys. Here, Ramadan, it ain't even been a day. And Muslims fighting and shooting. What happened? That ain't the mosque you go to, is it? Subhana Allah. Y'all see that? This is why Allah sends his punishment. Yeah, make sure you don't, you, yeah. Just, uh, um, did somebody get killed, I mean, or did, did somebody die? Girl, poor Phil. Y'all know Philadelphia has one of the highest crime rates in America. It's really sad. You know, they have the, the, the black on black crime rate in Philly, they say it's just off the hook. They say it's a dangerous place to live. <laughs> They're one of the most dangerous places to live in America. Oh my God, five people were hurt? Racial? Oh, here we go. So it was the Kafirs shooting at the Muslims, huh? Upset because the Muslims doing their prayers. Is that what it was? That's what I'm saying. They say Philadelphia is one of the most dangerous cities in America, guys. The children got hurt too. Y'all see this? She said the children got hurt from the bullets. So it was ra probably racial. People attacking Muslims. That's what I'm saying, guys. The Muslims are suffering all over the world, not just Gaza. And one of the things that bothers me, and I talked about, I spoke about the other day, I mean, as a dia, I mean, we dia have to get it together. These are for the people that call themselves people of the dawah. Don't tell people, pray for the Muslims around the world especially Gaza. Why is it especially Gaza? I would sit, tell you to pray for all, all the Muslims in the world, especially Philadelphia. Y'all don't be, look, children got hurt here. People attacking the Muslims, racially motivated. Muslims outside trying to pray the Eid prayer. And here they got a drive-by shooting, racial. America's the most racist country in the world. The most racist country in the world is America. And Muslims are under fire here. They're under fire here. So why would you tell the people to pray for all the Muslims, especially Gaza or especially one place? We're all one nation. We're all being a attacked in some type of way. This genocide is not is against all Muslims. Don't y'all know that? You die have to think before y'all talk and type stuff. And it was a 15 year old. Look at this y'all. This is happening as I'm speaking right now. This is happening in Philadelphia right here in America. Muslims on the fire. Hello, genocide. Children shot. Performing the E prayer. Pray for all the Muslims on earth. Period. The prophet never said especially one group. He didn't say make do it for all the Muslims, especially my tribe, the Quraysh. The prophet didn't say that. 
He said, pray for all the Muslims on earth. We're one body. When one of us hurts, we all feel it. When one of us is under fire, all of us are. It was a 15 year old doing a shooting. Can y'all see that the children are doing the shooting? The children are killing the Muslims here in racist America. We got to get it together. Okay, she said the cops shot him because he wouldn't put the gun down. Girl, this is right here, live as we speak, is going on in Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia is one of the most dangerous cities, man. And they say Chicago too. I don't know what's going on. I mean, well, we know what's going on, but Chicago and Philadelphia, the highest crime rate rates. Detroit too. Detroit, what is the, the world is just... <sighs> May Allah make it easy for the parents and for the, the people who are the wounded. And uh, may Allah keep us all strong and firm. And may we as Muslims overcome our racism too. Because even the Muslims, even we're racist. It's all about my tribe, my race, my country, my culture, especially my race especially my culture take the word especially out in your in your statements brothers and i'm talking to the male diet take that especially out people suffering that's about as bad as the muslims down there in in louisiana y'all remember during ramadan the second week of ramadan what happened to the muslims in louisiana they put a sign, a, a, they in there buying their dates and stuff to prepare for Ramadan. And the, the, the store owner got a sign saying, we still hang people here. You know, this is, we you know America's going through it too. The Muslims everywhere in the world, not just Gaza. And one man's blue is another man's strife, you know? Ain't nobody's trial worse than the other ones. Death is death. I don't care if it's from a bomb, if somebody blew a bomb on you, or if somebody took a rifle and shot you. Death is death. Unjust murder is unjust murder. So take the word especially out of your vocabulary. That's something that the dia. The male diet have to work on here. Subhanallah. I don't hear nobody else speaking this way but me. And I'm a female. I'm a female. Nobody listens to this woman. We got to do something about that. We're going to have to work on, about on that. These brothers got to get it together. Well, I'm glad that you weren't at the mosque, uh, Amina. I'm glad that you weren't there and that your kids are, are safe and your family is safe. And may Allah accept all of our fasts and forgive us all of our sins. I mean, yeah. Yeah, some of the mosques here in America canceled the Eid. Y'all know about that. Some of the sisters here were complaining because they're, some of the mosques canceled the Eid because of Gaza. You canceled the Eid celebration because of Gaza. What's going on in Gaza? I mean, come on, we're, we're just twisted. All right, but let's just move on here. Okay, so this is the class. Ramadan's over and we're back to our regular routine. This is our class, Diluting Wella Welbera. Your fitra has been awakened. You guys are closer to a law spiritually than you've ever been because Ramadan just ended. So the question that we left with yesterday, uh, that we were left with yesterday was, how do we maintain that closeness with the law? How do we keep that relationship with Allah? 
How do we keep this spirituality going? How do we prevent ourselves from falling back to our evil ways, falling back to our smoking, falling back to our drinking, to our party and to our sex and not wearing a hijab? Well, that's what I'm gonna speak about today. One of the things we can do to keep ourselves from falling back to how we were before Ramadan. So let me put the uh, PowerPoint up on the screen. Yeah, and just stay safe where you are, Sister Amina. Yeah, SubhanAllah, one of my students, all that shooting and stuff, racist. America's very racist, man. People wanna move here. When y'all think about moving to America, you better realize it's all about the Aryan race here. If you're not one of the Aryans, you ain't got nothing coming. Okay, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so make sure you guys put me on the big screen TV so the children can see. And uh, let me, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, inshallah, I'll make it so you guys, okay. And I'm gonna make my screen larger so everybody can see. Okay, let me start with the Zoom people first. It's really sad. I didn't even know that was going on, but you know, she said it's on the news now. SubhanAllah. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, man. Philadelphia. SubhanAllah. Okay, let's put the PowerPoint up here. Inshallah, I'm going to share it. There you go make the screen larger. Okay, so today we'll be covering pages 129, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to post the pages. Oh, hold on for one second, guys. I think I have to take this, I think, hold on. Hello? 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 Wait a minute, hold on. Hello? I can't Hello? I can't hear you. Go, who is this? Okay, I don't know what this is. Just hang it up. Okay, I thought it was somebody else. Okay, you guys can hear me, right? Can y'all hear me, uh, Amina? Because I had to take that call. I don't want to mess up my computer. Okay, so hopefully somebody can hear me. Okay, so here you guys. Uh, okay, good. Thanks. So today, what I'm going to do is post up every day, um, you know, the pages. We're doing pages 129 through 131. And today we're going to speak about humility. Because one of the ways to maintain that spirituality that we have and that our closeness that we have right now with the law is by developing uh, humility and submission towards him. So let's take a look at it. One of the best ways to bring Allah's love into our life is by acknowledging our limited abilities. And we spoke about this during the month of Ramadan. You know, when we look at ourselves and realize that we really are limited in our abilities, Allah is the one that provides for us. He's the provider. He's the maintainer. Like we talked about during Ramadan, you know, I can't make it rain. You can't make it rain. You know, if Allah didn't send the rain, then the crops would not grow. And if the crops did not grow, we wouldn't have food. So we learned that we as human beings are limited in our abilities. And because of that, we have to have humility before Allah. Does everybody understand that? And this is something that we worked on during Ramadan. We talked about how, in fact, the first week of Ramadan, we spoke about how we need to change our character, change our character to that which is pleasing to Allah. We did a lot of self-evaluation. 
We talked about how if you see that you have arrogance about you, then you need to try to get rid of it and replace it with humility because humility will cause us to recognize our limited abilities and humility will cause us to understand that Allah is who he said he is. And once we understand that Allah is in control, that he's the power, that his knowledge supersedes everything, that's when we begin to appreciate what we have. And we talked about that during Ramadan, how to show thankfulness towards Allah. Instead of us looking at the negativity in life, instead of us focusing on the bad things, we need to take a good hard look at the good things that's happening with us and then be thankful to Allah and show appreciation to him. We talked about how, you know, when something good happens, we should prostrate and thank Allah and remember all the other good things he's given us. So again, you know, humility, humility causes us to realize that we are not in control. Allah is the one that's in control. And we, and also even with what's going on in the world today, a lot of Muslims still are freaking out about Gaza. They're freaking out to the point where they're questioning their faith. They've revo re reverted back to tribalism, to racism and all of that, you know? These are people who lack humility because if you had humility, you would know that a law is in control. Nothing good happens, nor does anything bad happens unless a law wills it. He's the one that brought this war on. He's the one that said, I want to bring war and he brought it. Okay. Also humility will cause us to realize and recognize that our existence depends solely on a law. In other words, not only can no one harm us unless the law allows it, but nothing will benefit us either unless the law allow allows it. And I spoke about that with you guys uh, the last few weeks, the last week of Ramadan, how even with what's going on in the world now with this war in Gaza, if all the countries in the world were to band together to stop it, they wouldn't be able to stop anything unless a law willed it. So embracing humility causes us to recognize that our existence depends entirely on a law's will. And once we realize that, this will humble our hearts and cause us to submit to and accept his decree. Why are the Muslims acting crazy? Why is it that we have a lot of massages here in America? And by the way, I hope you male dyers speak out about this because they don't listen to me, I'm a woman. You famous personalities in America, y'all need to address this in your coot buys. We have a lot of massages who have canceled the Eid. They seriously, they've can they did the Eid, they did the prayer, but they canceled the celebration because of what's happening in Gaza. You know, these are people who are not humble. These are people who, who have not yet accepted the reality that our law is in control. And because they haven't accepted that, they can't submit and accept what's going on, okay? So Muslims today, in general, you look at most of the Muslims today, they lack humility. And with these people that lack humility, you will notice that they're arrogant too. What does that mean? If you go to correct them, if you go to tell them, um, uh, brother, why would you cancel the Eid? because of Gaza. They get arrogant. They think they know it all. They become prideful, okay? 
So until we embrace humility, we will never let go of our arrogance. We'll never let go of our pride. And in turn, we'll never surrender to Allah's wisdom. And we will never surrender to his decree. We will never accept that he's the one that makes the plan. He's the master planner. So again, guys, Ramadan has ended, but you working towards the goal of paradise, your journey towards paradise should be beginning. And you want to start that journey off by making yourself more humble. We all can, can eat some humble pie, humble ourselves. The more humble we become, then we'll be able to accept the decree of Allah. We'll be able to handle what's going on in the world better. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? I hope so. Humility deepens our love for Allah. Humility uh, fosters a genuine sense of awe and reverence to him. Humility will cause you to fear the people less and instead to only fear Allah. Humility will cause you to trust in Allah and not trust in the people. And doing all of this will cause our hearts to become filled with respect for Allah. And once we have that respect for Allah that we, that we should give to him, then we'll do everything in our power to seek his pleasure and obey him. That's one of the questions that one of you sisters asked. Why do people deliberately disobey Allah? Because they have no fear of his punishment. And why is it that they have no fear of his punishment? It's because they lack humility. And not only will humility better your relationship with Allah, but it will also better your relationship with the people too. Humility will inspire you to treat everyone with kindness, to treat everyone with respect and fairness, regardless of their race, regardless of their social status or background. These brothers who are putting out all this Ramadan Mubarak and saying, pray for all the Muslims, especially Gaza. They don't have the humility. So because they lack humility, this is why they're showing disparate treatment. They're totally disregarding the Muslims suffering in Africa who've been suffering for decades. They're disregarding the Muslims in China, the Muslims in, in, in Pakistan and in India, the Muslims right here in America who were shot outside their mosque today doing their Eid prayer. The brothers who put that, those memos out, especially one group of people, these are people who have no humility. So they're showing disparate treatment. You're giving, you're being unfair to the rest of the Muslim nation. You're only showing concern. You're only showing allegiance. You're only showing support for one part of the world. That is not Islam, guys. That is not Islam. So, you know, without humility, our relationships with each other becomes twisted where we show, we resort to racism, disparate treatment and the likes, okay? So that brings us to the question. If I'm one of those Muslims, I look at myself because again, we're still doing self-evaluation. I look at myself and see, well, wow, I'm one of those people. I don't care about Africa. I don't care what happened in Philadelphia today. I don't care about no Muslims. All I'm concerned with is Gaza. So you realize that you are one of those type of people. You will ask yourself, well, what can I do to change this? Because remember, we talked about how Allah will never change the condition of a person until you take the steps to change yourself. You want to live while I will better. You want to have allegiance to all Muslims, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of country. 
regardless of flags. That's why y'all better throw them flags away. So what can I do to change this about myself? Well, again, like we talked about during Ramadan, you need to engage in self-reflection. Self-reflection helps us to develop humility by regularly uh, reminding ourselves of how great a law is and how he's the one that provides and maintains, how he is in control of everything. This will keep our ego in check. This will prevent us from becoming arrogant. So self-evaluation is the first step to developing humility. The second step in developing humility would be to seek the proper knowledge of this religion. Remember, Islam is only based on two sources, the Quran and the authentic Hadith. Okay, we need to stick to those two sources. And if something is confusing, we should look to see the, uh, the, the, what the companions understood it to be. Look to follow the, the companion's understanding because the law says no one understood this religion better than those companions. And even amongst them, there's a hierarchy. You don't jump to Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri was one of the later generations. You start at the top with Abu Bakr, with Umar, with Ibn Abbas and those companions. You guys understand that? Because Ibn Abbas, Abu Bakr, Ibn Umar, they out Trump at Hassan al-Basri. Because Hassan al-Basri never, never knew the prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa never saw him, never met him. So there's an hierarchy to follow even with them. So seeking the correct knowledge and wisdom from the Quran and the Hadith becomes the second means of developing humility. And what's the third way to develop it? Well, through your prayers, through your supplications, because by worshiping Allah, talking to him, calling upon him, this becomes a, uh, this will cause you to uh, show humility before him because you realize that Allah is the only one that can answer your cause, not any human being. And this will cause you to submit to Allah. Everybody understand that? So for those of you who are lacking humility, I want y'all to get to busy with it. Do first of all, do self-reflection. Remind yourself that you're not in control of what's happening to you. Allah is the one that sends it to us. He'll throw you a curve ball sometimes, and then it'll be a straight ball others. But reminding yourselves on a regular basis that Allah is the greatest and not you, this will keep your ego in check. And then you want to continue to come to these classes. And you want to continue to do the good deeds that you were doing all Ramadan. Okay. And one of the good things, the good deeds that many of you got into the habit of doing was going to the mosque to pray behind the imam at night, the Tara week. Well, one of the best things you can do to develop humility before your Lord and to also keep that relationship with him strong is to continue doing the night prayer. To pray it during the last third of the night. Because by engaging in the, uh, pr the night prayers and reading the Quran alone to your, by yourself, this helps to, again, reaffirm your belief in Allah and your purpose and your allegiance to him, okay? The voluntary night prayer holds a lot of spiritual significance. So you wanna perform the night prayer during the last third of the night and also you know, afterwards, take a few minutes, about 10 minutes to read at least one paragraph of the Quran 
and with whatever paragraph you're reading, you know, ponder the meaning of it. Okay. This will cause your heart to stay soft and that, and that tranquilness trink, 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 will keep your relationship with Allah intact. Okay. And I want to talk again about reading the Quran. And we spoke about this during Ramadan, but I want to, and I can never overemphasize it. Whenever we read the Quran, we do it thinking about what we're saying. You want to understand the meaning of what you're saying. And then after you understand what, uh, what uh, uh, Allah is saying, you want to apply it to your personal life. So your recitation should be accompanied with by a, a sincere, genuine desire for forgiveness from Allah and for closeness to him. So I want you guys to keep that in mind during the last third of the night when you are uh, talking to your Lord. And again, you know, you should do it. Make sure the kids are in the bed asleep. Spending time alone reciting the Quran, you know, during the last third of the night is when Allah comes down to the lowest sky, the lowest sky. And he asks, who is there who is in need of something from me? So again, you want to keep the habit of praying the night prayer, but instead of praying it in the beginning of the night, because that's what Tarawi, Tarawi refers to the beginning of the night. Instead of praying it during the beginning of the night, you want to pray it during the last third of the night. The last third of the night is right before, fi uh, before Fajr. Okay? And again, you can adjust your uh, sleeping habits, your sleeping pa uh, patterns to do this. Okay? So now, let's see how well you all were paying attention. Quiz time. Oh, yeah. I got several questions to see how well you guys were paying attention to me. Let's look at the first question. We will never realize our limitations as humans unless we do which of the following? Is it understand and accept that Allah is greater than us? Or is the answer perform five of the daily prayers? Or is the answer to fast on a regular basis? Or is the answer to control our tongues? To answer, which answer is correct? Come on, don't make me call on you guys. We will never realize our lim limitations unless we understand and accept that Allah is greater than us or unless we perform all five of the prayers or unless we fast on a regular basis or unless we control our tongues or is it all of the above? What do you guys think? Fatma, can you see on YouTube? Are there any answers there? Because I can't see with the screen up. Any answers? I would say all of the above. I'm sorry, I just, just got in here. Okay, Anissa, mm -hmm. Anissa said all of the above. Do you guys agree with her answer or disagree? Anybody disagrees? On YouTube, Sakina said the first one. Okay, Sakina said the first one, which is understand and accept that Allah is greater than us. And Anissa said all of the above, which who's correct, guys? Who do you guys think is correct? Understanding and accepting Allah's greatness. Mash and for me, the first one, understand and accept that Allah is greater than us. MashaAllah, you guys are correct. Anissa, unfortunately, was wrong. Good job. Okay, my problem. That's okay. Good job. Mm -hmm. We will never realize our limitations until we understand and accept that Allah is greater than us. You yeah. can pray all five prayers. Look how many Muslims pray every day. But they still, they still, they still don't realize that they're limited in some things. 
Look how many Muslims fast on a regular basis, but they still don't realize that they have limitations, that they can't do everything. Look how many Muslims don't even have a tongue, but they still got arrogance. So good job. The correct answer is the first one. Understand and accept that Allah is greater than us. Good job. Don't y'all take too long to answer the answer the questions too. Thank you, Anissa. Got me running up in here saying the wrong thing. That's okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, look at the second question. Humbling. Humbling ourselves causes us to do which of the following? Humbling ourselves causes us to realize that we need a law. Or humbling ourselves causes us to submit to a law's decree. Or humbling ourselves causes us to let go of arrogance. Or is it all of the above or none of the above? What do you guys think? All of the above. Anybody disagree? MashaAllah, good job. That's the correct answer, all of the above. Once we humble ourselves, you will realize that you need a law in your life. That's the problem with Kanye West. Everybody's talking about Kanye West. I think he's got some developmental. I think he's mentally ill myself. I think he might be schizophrenic, to be honest. But why does he think that he's a god? Why does he say the things he says? I mean, he 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 has he's not humble, he's arrogant. He doesn't believe in Allah. And again, why is it that so many Muslims today are freaking out about Gaza? Why is it that we're pointing the fingers and blaming everyone, including the Muslim countries, when you need to realize that Allah is in control? These are people that don't have humility. If you don't have humility, you will never submit to Allah's decree. And these same people can't let go of their arrogance. So mashallah, humbleness, humility will cause you to realize that you are in need of a law and it will cause you to submit to his decree and let go of that ignorance and arrogance and ignorance too. Good job. What about this? This is the last question. What are some things? What are some things that we can do to develop humility before a law? What are some things that we can do? If you realize that you are a person that is lacking in humbleness, you're lacking in humility, what are some things you can do to develop it, to change that? Who can remember? What are some things you can do that can cause you to become more humble before law? Treating people with kindness and fairness and also self-reflecting, you know, and on ourselves. Mashallah, self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Good job. What else? And mm -hmm. kindness. Go ahead, Anissa. That's what I was going to say. We have to know who we are and know that we are not who we think we are. Good job. The law of God above us. Good job. It's another answer. Great. Good job. What else? You guys are on the ball today. Any other answers? Good job. Y'all Y'all really gave them. You can also pray on the last side of the night. Oh, good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Humbling yourself before law. Talking to him during the last third. What else? Good job. Um, Sakina says, prayer, reflection on the Quran. Exactly. Reading the Quran, reading what Allah says to us in the Quran and pondering, reflecting on what he says. MashaAllah, you guys did good on this quiz today. So Alhamdulillah, uh, that's what I wanted to speak about today. I wanted to cover those two pages. Tomorrow, we'll pick up with the next two pages. 
So make sure you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, read the book. So again, you know, this is why I was telling you uh, new Shahadas and new Muslims to stick with me. Ramadan has ended, but my classes have not. And I'm going to, inshallah, if you come here every day, I'm going to help keep you on your journey towards uh, strengthening and bettering your relationship with Allah.